Hi guys, and welcome back to Logical Redstone Reloaded. Last episode, I covered binary addition and showed off some really cool redstone adders. Today, we're gonna take it one step further and talk about subtraction. I hope you enjoy. Just like last time with addition, binary subtraction is really similar to decimal subtraction. You can subtract binary numbers on paper using a pretty simple algorithm. And if you want, you can make a circuit that directly implements that algorithm, just like the full adder. However, I wouldn't recommend doing that. You see, subtraction can actually be viewed as just another form of addition as long as you consider both positive and negative numbers. For example, if I want to subtract 6 minus 4, this is equivalent to 6 plus negative 4. They both equal 2. In general, a minus b is the same thing as a plus negative b. Notice how this isn't a subtraction. It's an addition between a positive number and a negative number. Therefore, if we could somehow represent negative numbers in binary, then maybe we could just reuse an adder to simulate subtraction. So let's try to represent negative numbers in binary. In math, negative numbers are written with a negative sign in the front. And although not as common, positive numbers can have a plus sign. That sign is one extra bit of information, right? It has two states, and the state of it tells you the sign of the number. So why not just copy that strategy in binary? Let's make the first bit of a number the sign bit. Zero means positive, and one means negative. And the rest of the binary number will have the normal place values. This format is called signed magnitude notation, because the number consists of a sign and a magnitude. The sign is the first bit, and the magnitude is the rest of the number. For example, let's say I have 1101 in sign magnitude notation. The sign bit is 1, so it's negative, and the magnitude is 101, or 5. So 1101 in this notation is negative 5. Or let's say I have 0111. The sign is 0 and the magnitude is 7, so this is positive 7. One important thing about this format is that you need to know how many bits you're working with. 1101 is only negative 5 if you're working with 4 bits. If you were working with 5 bits, this could be interpreted as positive 13. Or if you were working with 3 bits, it could be negative 1. But anyways, this is a pretty solid way to represent negative numbers. It's simple, and it's kind of what we're already used to when we read numbers. And here's a table that shows all the different 4-bit numbers and what each one represents in sign magnitude notation. One weird thing about this is that we have two representations for zero, both positive zero and negative zero, but oh well, maybe it doesn't matter. What matters more is does this format work if you add positive and negative numbers together? Because that's our ultimate goal. Well, let's try it out. I've got a 4-bit CCA here. If we add positive 5 plus negative 5, we get this. Remember, we need to stay in 4 bits here, so let's just ignore the carryout. And it looks like we got positive 2. That's not great. We wanted a 0, not a 2. Clearly, adding positives and negatives together with sign magnitude does not always work. So back to the drawing board, I guess. Alright, well, even though this answer was not what we wanted, I want you to notice something interesting that happened during that addition. We added two numbers together, and the result got so big that it couldn't fit in the same number of bits anymore. We got a carryout, and in a way, our adder overflowed. This idea of overflowing an adder is actually the key behind simulating subtraction with addition. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say I'm working with 4 bits, and I want to subtract 6 minus 2. Now, 6 minus 2 is 4, but again, we're trying to simulate this using addition. So the question is, can we add something to 6 that has the same effect as subtracting 2? As it turns out, you can. If you add 14 instead, then 6 plus 14 is 20, but notice that it overflowed. So we ignore the 16 bit, and the answer is 4. Therefore, adding 14 has the same effect as subtracting 2, as long as you stay in 4 bits. Okay, so let's just say that 14, or 1110, is the representation for negative 2. And now, you can even test this on the CCA. 6 plus negative 2 is 4. This representation for negative 2 is basically so big that it overflowed the adder and wrapped around to give the correct answer again. A really good analogy for this is a clock. On a 12 hour clock, instead of going 2 hours backwards, you can also go 10 hours forwards. Both of those get you to the same time. Also, if you go past 12, like maybe 13 o'clock, that's the same thing as 1 o'clock. This is called modular arithmetic. You could say that a 12 hour clock has a modulus of 12. And in mathematics, you can express this by saying 13 equals 1 mod 12. 
because 13 and 1 are both 1 past a multiple of 12. And since 2 hours backwards is the same as 10 forwards, you can also say that negative 2 equals 10 mod 12. Now, since we're working with only 4 bits, this is the same thing as mod 16, or a 16 hour clock if you want to look at it that way. Remember how 20 was the same thing as 4? Well, that's because 20 is 4 past a multiple of 16. 20 equals 4 mod 16. So, to find a good representation for a negative number, all you have to do is find an equivalent positive number in that modulus. In mod 16, negative 2 is equal to positive 14. That's why 14 works really well as a representation for negative 2 when you're working with 4 bits. And by the way, a little shortcut to find it is to just take the modulus minus that number. 16 minus 2 is 14. Therefore, 14 must be a good representation for negative 2. As another example, let's say I wanted to do 7 minus 3 and I'm working with 5 bits. Working with 5 bits is the same thing as mod 32. In general, working with n bits is the same thing as mod 2 to the n. So we can find a good representation for negative 3 by doing 32 minus 3, which is 29. And sure enough, if you add 7 plus 29, or 7 plus negative 3, and ignore the overflow, you get 4. Perfect. Alright, we're making great progress. Let's design a notation for negative numbers based on this new knowledge. I'll make the positive numbers the same thing that they were in signed magnitude, no reason to change those. But then for the negative numbers, I'll make them all 16 minus the positive version, because 16 is the modulus for 4 bits. For example, 16 minus 5 is 11, so the representation for negative 5 is 11, or 1011. This notation has a special name, it's called 2's complement. Two's complement is the most popular notation for negative numbers in computers, and for good reason, it has a ton of advantages. The first and most important advantage is that it allows us to reuse adders to perform subtraction. For example, let's do 5 plus negative 4. According to the table, 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1, and negative 4 is 1, 1, 0, 0. And we get 1. Beautiful. The other advantage is that it's really easy to go from a number to its negative version, or its complement. To take the complement of a number, all you have to do is invert all the bits and add 1. For example, let's go from positive 3 to its complement, negative 3. In 4-bit 2's complement, positive 3 is 0, 0, 1, 1. Inverting all the bits gives us 1, 1, 0, 0, and then adding 1 gives us 1, 1, 0, 1. So negative 3 is 1, 1, 0, 1. And sure enough, if we invert all the bits and add 1 again, we're back to positive 3. That makes sense because the complement of a complement cancels out. Also, what's kind of cool is 0 is its own complement. If you take the complement of 0, you just get 0 back. Inverting gives you all 1s, and adding 1 rolls over to 0 again. Now, this invert and add 1 trick can feel very magical. And honestly, you can go your entire career without understanding why it works, and you'll probably be just fine. But I like understanding why things work, so let me show you why inverting and adding 1 actually works. Remember that we got the negative version of a number by taking the modulus minus that number. And because we're in binary, the modulus is always some 2 to the n, like 16 for example. Now if I have 16 minus x, this is the same thing algebraically as 15 minus x plus 1. 15 in binary is all 1s, so 15 minus x has the same effect as inverting x. 1 minus 0 flips the 0 to a 1, 1 minus 1 flips the 1 to a 0. And then of course, you can just add 1. Therefore, any 2 to the n minus x is equivalent to inverting the bits of x and adding 1. With this in mind, we can now make a binary subtractor. Let's modify this adder to make it do a plus negative b instead of a plus b. I'll invert all the bits of b by adding a bunch of torches, or not gates. And then I'll add 1 by turning on the carry-in. And now if we put in 7 minus 3, we get 4. Or 2 minus 5 is 1, 1, 0, 1. That is negative 3. By inverting the b input and adding 1 with the carry-in, this adder is now a subtractor. It computes a plus negative b instead of a plus b. And another amazing property of 2's complement is that we still have a sign bit. Notice how the positive numbers start with 0 and the negative numbers start with 1. So that's pretty useful. Okay, so this subtractor is great, but it can kind of only do subtraction. What if we still want to add sometimes as well? 
Is it possible to modify this in such a way that it could toggle between addition and subtraction? Well, yeah. I mean, in that case, you would need a circuit that just allows you to toggle between inverting B and adding 1 to not doing that anymore. One way to toggle the inversion of B is to use XOR gates. An XOR gate can also be used as a conditional inverter. If you imagine that there's a wire going from this lamp to this lamp, then the other input controls whether or not the wire acts like an inverter. For example, if this is zero, then there's no inversion. The signal just goes through the wire as normal, just like a normal wire would. But if you set the control to one, now there's an inversion. Zero becomes one and one becomes zero, just like a redstone torch. So if you stack a bunch of XOR gates on top of each other and OR all of the control signals together into a tower, you can now conditionally invert a binary number. When the control is zero, the number just passes through normally. When the control is one, the number becomes inverted. So if we add that to the B input, we can now conditionally invert B. And then to add one, let's just hook up the control signal to the carry in as well. And now when this lever is on, it's a subtractor. The B input becomes negated, and we add 1 using the carry-in. But when the lever is off, it's back to being a completely normal adder. For example, let's put in 5 and 2. When the lever is off, it's computing 5 plus 2, which gives us 7. When the lever is on, it's computing 5 minus 2, which gives us 3. That is beautiful. One really important thing I want to stress here is that notations only exist for the developer. The hardware, like an adder, does not know whether or not you're using signed numbers, like 2's complement, or unsigned numbers, like the normal binary we used last episode. An adder is just a logic circuit, and it will do what it's told. It's up to you to keep track of what notation you're using and how to interpret the results. Additionally, if you're not careful, it's possible to land way outside the range of 2's complement. I mean, the range of 4-bit 2's complement is only negative 8 to positive 7. That's all you can represent. So if you try to do something like negative 7 plus negative 7, which is negative 14, that's way outside your range, and the answer you end up getting will obviously be incorrect. This type of error can be detected with proper circuitry, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. Check out the links in the description if you want to learn more about overflow detection in 2's complement. But anyways, this is really cool. By using a tower of conditional inverters, we can essentially switch between an adder and a subtractor. Another really cool thing about 2's complement is something that I actually didn't know about until the comments in my last series pointed it out. The sign bit of a 2's complement number can be viewed as having a negative place value. For example, 1101 can be thought of as negative 8 plus 4 plus 1. That equals negative 3, and sure enough, 1101 is negative 3. This works for any 2's complement number, positive or negative, and any bit size as well. If I was working with 8-bit 2's complement, then the sign bit would be the negative 128th place. Real quick, the last thing I want to mention in this video is another notation for negative numbers called 1's complement. Historically, this was used in computers before 2's complement became more popular. It's very similar to 2's complement. The difference is that instead of inverting and adding 1 to take the complement, you only invert. However, due to its long list of disadvantages, it's rarely used in computers anymore, only in rare scenarios. But it's a good thing to know about because it'll still come up from time to time if you go into computer science. Next episode will be a really fun one. It's about all sorts of combinational logic and all the best designs for them with redstone. You do not want to miss it. If you'd like to support me in these videos, subscribe and consider checking out my Patreon page in the description. I also have a redstone discord server, so come join us if that sounds interesting. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Peace out, guys.